Welcome back to my channel. I'm Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. On today's video, I'm gonna be smoking two Texas style briskets on my brand new thousand gallon bison smoker. Stay tuned. All right, so here's brisket number one of two. This is a prime brisket from HEB, as you can see right here. The cost was $4.99 a pound. I paid $96.96 for this brisket. Now I did pick up these two briskets from HEB on my way out to Forney, Texas to pick up my bison smokers. And I said, you know what? Let's pick up a couple of briskets and let that be the first cook on this big old bison smoker. So I'm just gonna take the brisket out of the plastic here. All right, so I took the brisket out of the wrap and I just want to look at it and see what I'm going to have to trim. Obviously, I'm going to trim the edge, round off these corners right here, trim off this real thin side. Point looks decent, just round that off a little bit more. And this is still partially frozen. This is a little bit of a mohawk, but nothing too crazy. So I like to start with the deckle and then start trimming a lot of this silver skin off the top of the brisket. And I do make a ton of sausage. So I save all the little trimmings. So I was really debating on what my first cook should be on my bison smoker, but you know what? We're in Texas and I was a little bit nervous starting with a brisket or that being my first cook. I really wanted to start with some pork shoulders. You know, pork is a little bit more forgiving but I said, you know what? Let's just dive into it and get it done. So this brisket is sitting a little bit high on this side. So I'm definitely gonna have to trim the fat cap side of this brisket. I am really loving this marbling right here. Check that out, look at that point. Man, that is extremely marbled. This is my first HEB brisket. And so far, so good. All right, this flat is looking really good. I am loving that. Let's check out that fat cap. All right, so this brisket right here is a little mangled, which I will clean up, no big deal. Clean up this fat cap, trim down this mohawk. All right, let's start right here. Remember, you want to get this as aerodynamic as possible. All right, I'm going to trim down this mohawk just a bit, just to get that brisket to sit a little bit flatter. All right, I'm going to round down this corner right here, and it's really thin. Looking much better already. All right, so on this side, opposite of the Mohawk, you have quite a bit of fat right here. So you wanna make sure you trim this down to about a quarter of an inch. All right, so this brisket is nice and trimmed up. Got about a quarter of an inch of fat on that fat cap. Again, I'm gonna be smoking both briskets with the fat cap up, and this is looking mighty fine. So I'm gonna trim up the other brisket, and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, so I've got both briskets completely trimmed up. I'm gonna do a brisket experiment on this cook as well. You guys know that I like to use mustard as a binder. So on this brisket, I'm gonna use some mustard as a binder. And on the other brisket, I'm not gonna use any binder. And we're about to find out if a binder is necessary. What do you guys use as a binder, if anything? All right, so I've got my homemade SPG right here. 
My SPG is one cup of kosher salt, two cups of coarse black pepper, and four tablespoons of granulated garlic. Apply a light layer of mustard. And a good layer of our SPG. And don't forget to grab your edges. Now I am seasoning these briskets the night before I'm gonna be smoking them. So I'm gonna pop these in my fridge. All right, so here's our second brisket. Again, no binder on this one. All right, let's season up the fat cap. All right, so I'm gonna season up these edges, pop them in my fridge overnight, and tomorrow afternoon, we're gonna pop these bad boys on my Bison 1000 gallon offset smoker. All right, so it's the very next day and I've got my Bison running at 250 degrees on the bottom grates. Started off the firebox with a bed of charcoal, built a ladder, post oak, got a really nice coal bed, and again, we're running at 250 degrees. So I'm starting on the left side of the smoker, second door from the stack. This is where my first brisket's gonna go. All right, so here's our first brisket. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. Now this brisket is the one with no mustard as a binder. Man, that brisket looks tiny inside this giant smoker. Look at that little guy. All right, let's load up the second brisket. This is on the second door from the firebox. Check out this gorgeous brisket. Nice trim job, huh? Again, right in the middle. All right, that second brisket is in the smoker. We're gonna give these about four hours. I'll bring you guys back at that point and we'll check on our bark production. Stay tuned. All right, so we're four and a half hours into the cook. Let's take a look at this brisket right here on the right side. All right, this brisket is looking really good. That bark is not quite set yet. And here's a perfect example of that. See, I just touched it and some of the pepper came off, but it's still really moist on the surface. So that is not ready to be spritzed yet. Man, that is looking really good. Let's take a look at the other brisket. Man, that bark is looking really good. It's not quite set yet. Again, four and a half hours in, you see that bark is still coming off, but that surface is really moist. So I'm gonna give this a couple more hours. Again, we're running between 250 and 275 degrees. I'll bring you guys back in a minute. Stay tuned. All right, so eight and a half hours later, and it's time to wrap the briskets. They hit 170 degrees internal, and we have a beautiful bark. Check this out, guys. Looking really nice. Now the fat did split right here, but I think we're gonna be okay. So I'm just gonna spritz this with apple cider vinegar and water. Do a simple wrap with peach butcher paper. And this excess butcher paper just tuck it on the bottom, just like that. Let me grab the other one and I'll bring you guys right back. All right, here's our second brisket. Again, this brisket is a little bit bigger. And again, this is the brisket where I used mustard as a binder. So I'm just gonna spritz it a little bit. I've already spritzed the butcher paper to make it more pliable as well. Now this brisket right here has some really nice bark, guys. Now I'm not saying the mustard is the reason, but I'm really loving this. All right, let's wrap her up. Fat cap is down. Fat cap is up. Excess butcher paper gets tucked on the bottom. Wow, 
All right, let's throw these back on the smoker. All right, so I've got both briskets back inside my smoker. This is a brisket where I use mustard as a binder, and the smaller one is no binder. So at this point, I'm just gonna let the briskets get really nice and tender. Again, that's gonna be well over 200 degrees, probably 204, 205 degrees. I'm gonna pull them off, let them rest until they hit 165 degrees internal. At that point, I'm gonna place these inside my PK100 smoker, where they're gonna rest for about 10 hours, and tomorrow morning, we'll slice into these bad boys. Stay tuned. All right, so it's the very next day. Now this brisket right here was the one where we didn't use mustard as a binder, which was the smaller of the two briskets. This brisket actually took 13 hours to cook, and this one rested nine hours overnight. So let's take a look at it, see how we did. I'm super excited here. Man, I am really loving this color. Check that bad boy out. Now the fat did split right here for some crazy reason, but that's okay. It's not gonna affect the overall flavor of this brisket, but check out that color. Man, this is amazing. Got plenty of rendered tallow, so I'm just gonna pour that over the top of the brisket. Remember, I didn't add any tallow to the wrap, okay? This is all its own tallow. All right, so let's take a look at it. As far as the bark, you know what? It held on really nice, and remember, this was the one where we didn't use any mustard as a binder. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that you really don't need mustard as a binder. Okay, now it's not gonna affect the overall flavor. That bark is on there, it's not gonna go anywhere. So again, it's up to you if you wanna use mustard or not. I have been using mustard forever and I think it works, but here's a brisket with no binder and it looks absolutely savage. All right, so I'm just gonna take one slice off of each brisket, which is gonna be a center cut slice right around here. Check that out. Oh my goodness. I'm not gonna squeeze it. Look at that. Whew. I didn't squeeze that. That's coming out on its own, okay? So I'm just gonna take one slice. Okay, that's one slice off the flat. I'm also gonna take one slice off the point. A good manly size slice. So excited guys, this was my first cook on my big bison smoker. Check that out, oh man, money. I'm gonna move this aside. And here's our other brisket. Now this brisket actually took 14 hours to cook, which is an hour longer than the smaller brisket. Oh man, look at this bad boy. I'm really loving the bark on this brisket, check that out. It's almost like the bark just looks nicer. And again, this was the brisket that we used mustard as a binder. Again, use its own tallow to keep it nice and moist. All right, let's slice into this brisket. Again, I'm gonna get a center cut slice right around here and that bark is absolutely savage beautiful look at that bad boy gonna get one slice And I'm also gonna take one slice off of the point here. Money, look at that smoke ring. That bark is nice and crunchy. Check that out, beautiful. All right, let's give these briskets a try and see how we did. First, the flat section off the brisket with no binder. Look at that. Money, good smoke ring, nice and juicy. Here we go. Mm -mm. 
That is super tasty, and that bark flavor is amazing. So here's our point section. And I'm just going to do this like a man and bite right into this. Here we go. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. That point is money. That flavor is fantastic. Super juicy. My lips are all wet with the beef tallow. This is wonderful. All right, so now let's try the brisket where I use mustard as a binder. I'm not expecting a difference in flavor, but let's give it a shot. Here we go. Mmm. That bark flavor is delicious. Mm, mm, mm. All right, so now let's try that point off the brisket where we use mustard as a binder. Check that bad boy out. Again, these are super juicy. It's gonna take a big old chunk off of this. Look at that. Mm. There is nothing wrong with that point flavor. That is absolutely wonderful. But you know what, guys? I am not noticing a difference in flavor. And as far as the bark, I do like the bark a little bit better on the brisket where I use mustard as a binder. As you can see, the fat is nice and rendered. It's got a nice yellow color to it. Not sure if you guys can see that on the camera, but I'll tilt it, so hopefully you guys get to see it. As far as the flavor, both briskets are absolutely wonderful, but the bark on the one where I use mustard as a binder, it does look better in my opinion. So those of you guys that have been watching my channel for a while know that I love to use mustard as a binder. And after this cook, I'm gonna to continue to use mustard as a binder. Now let's talk about the cook on my brand new bison smoker. That thing runs like a Cadillac, super smooth throughout, real easy to maintain temperatures. I am absolutely loving this pit. Now I was a little bit nervous about my first cook because of the size of the smoker, but you know what? It's actually real easy to operate. I hope you guys enjoyed my very first cook on my Bison 1000 gallon offset smoker. If this is your first time to my channel, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, tell a friend. Until next time, Joe with Smoking Joe's Pit Barbecue. Man, this is wonderful. Look at that smoke ring. Mmm.